In chapter three, we are going to be talking about functions. And then 3.1, we need to talk about what is a function, what is a one-to-one -one function. We're going to talk about the vertical line test, and then just some of our basic, most fundamental functions, which I'll call the parent functions. Now remember, a function is a relationship between x's and y's. where every x is paired up with exactly one y. So what do I mean by that? Well, that means that every x we know um, specifically is only paired up with one y. It doesn't tell us how many times the y is used. Um, it is just a relationship where x is just used once. So if we look at the relationships we see here, so if we don't know if they're a function or not, they might be something called a relation. So let's take a look at this first one here. You'll notice how j is paired up once with 6, e is paired up once with 3, z is paired up once with negative 2, n is paired up once with 4. So um, that is a perfect example of a function. Let's take a look at the second one. Let's check each each x value. Our domain values are our x's. So our n is paired up once. Our j is paired up once. Our c is only paired up once. Our f is only paired up once. Our z is only paired up once. We don't care that this one was used twice and this one was used twice. Our range could be used multiple times, but our domain values every x value is only paired up once. So there's only one string going out of it. I don't care what it connects to as long as it connects to something. So this would be a function. Let's take a look at this one. So look at our s's. So look at our domain values. s. So look at our domain values. We only, uh, we only see S one time. It is paired up with sky. Here's the one that's causing the issue. The U is paired up twice. It is paired up with pen and with paper. So that is why we don't have to go further. It is not a function. Let's look at the numbers we see over here in relation four. One is paired up once, but zero is paired up three different times. So that is a no. So the X's can only be used once. Y's can repeat themselves multiple times. Now, what about equations? It says here, for each of the following equations, determine whether y is a function of x. So there's some function notation we have talked about in the past. And so this is a function notation, function of x. So you'll notice that our first one here says x equals, and it is a function of y's. You'll see here. Now it's a good indication if the y has uh, powers on it, especially even powers, that it is not going to be a function. This technically, if you were to graph it, it would be a parabola that is lying on its side, something like this. And because of that, um, you can see that uh, this x value is paired up twice. This x value is paired up twice. So it would not be a function. This is fine. We could write that in function notation, f of x equals 7x. That's a function. 
If I plug in the number one, I'm only going to get one value out, negative seven. If I plug in any number, I'm only going to get one thing out. Now, the second one here, don't be fooled. If we do a little bit of manipulation here and we write it as uh, y equals negative one ninth x, that could be written in function notation. So f of x equals negative one ninth x. If you were to graph it, it is a line. If I stick in a particular value of x, I'm only going to get one value of y. That's a function. And you might recall um, this here is also a linear function. Um, it's called a linear function for a reason. If you'll notice that ax plus by equals c notation, that standard form, that is always going to be a function as well. We could do a little rearranging for that one also. If you solved it for y, we would get y equals negative one-fourth x uh, plus 2. And then it's easy to write that in function notation. So all of those are functions except our top one. It is not a function of x. It's actually a function of y. So you will see here that we've got all the y's over on one side and the x is by itself is a good indication. But one of the most helpful tools for us to find whether something is a um, function or not is to look at the graph and do what's called a vertical line test. Now, the vertical line test basically says that if any vertical line hits the graph in more than one location, then it is not a function. So if you can draw any vertical line at all, and if it hits the graph in more than one spot, then it is not a function. Now, why is that? Well, that means that your x repeated itself. Now, let's talk about the horizontal line test. Horizontal line test is for something we already know as a function. If a horizontal, or if, let's, let's word it the same way. If any horizontal line hits a function, so it's already passed the vertical line test in more than one location, then it will not have an inverse. If all horizontal lines are good, then the function is one to one. Okay, let me read that again. If any horizontal line hits a function in more than one location, then it will not have an inverse. If all horizontal lines are good, then the function is one to one. And it would have an inverse. So the vertical line test tells us by looking at the graph if it is a function. All vertical lines will only hit it at most one time. If it is a function and you try to do the horizontal line test, you're looking to see if a, all horizontal lines only hit it once. If all horizontal lines only hit it at most one time, then it is a one-to-one -one function, a very specific kind of function.
So let's look at these graphs. Are they first vertical uh, line test? Are they functions? But then I'm also going to do the uh, one to one just since we have these graphs here. Okay, so first, are they functions? Well, let's think about if we wanted to graph any vertical line, you will notice that this will only ever hit the graph in one location. So it's a yes. But if we wanted to do a uh, horizontal line test, see how it hits these little bars in lots of loads, all those spots? So that is, it's not one-to-one. -one. Okay, let's look at this one. Is it a function? Well, these vertical lines hit it in multiple locations, so it's a no. So if it's not a function, we can't call it a one-to-one -one function, so don't even worry about that part. Let's take a look at graph three. Let's go through every single point. Vertical line hits it once. Vertical line hits it twice. So that's a no. That's not a function. So we don't even have to worry about one-to-one. -one. Let's try a few more. Is this a function? Vertical line, vertical line, vertical line, vertical line, vertical line, vertical line. Perfect, perfect, perfect. So it's a yes. This function, if we went to graph it and look at the horizontal line test, it's not one-to-one -one either. This is actually uh, from trigonometry. Um, this is a type of either a sine wave or a cosine wave. Graph five, first let's do a vertical line test. Is it a function? Well, look, no, 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 no. So that's a no. Let's take a look at this set of points. Now we're gonna check every set of points. That one's okay. Okay, 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 yes. So that one is a function. Now let's try the one-to-one. -one. Let's see if it is going to pass our horizontal line test. That one's good. That one's good. Oh, it's not one to one. Okay, we'll get to some that are, but I just wanted to kind of start, start that process now. So functions pass vertical line test. One to one function also will pass a, a horizontal line test. So here are some um, functions. We did not do in the graph um, the some domain and range thing, some domain and range things, um, and some with points. So I want to do number three here with you right now, and then number three down there. Okay. So open up the three one a homework. Let's talk about 3, 1, A, number 3. Now it says, uh, are they functions uh, and are they uh, one to one? Okay. So um, actually, we might do maybe 3 and let's look at 5 real quick. Let me go 3 and 4. Let's do both of those. Okay. So you will notice for number. Uh, three that we have an X that repeats itself. So you would say it's not a function. So it's definitely not one to one, has to be a function to, to evaluate that. But now let's look at these X's. Each one of those X's is a different number. Different, 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 different. So this is a function. And let's decide if it is one to one. Then you just got to check are the y's also all different? Different, 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 different. 
So all of the y's are also different. When that's the case for a list of ordered pairs, uh, it would be one to one. Okay, so now let's jump to the bottom here. See where it says label domain and range? I wanted you to see a domain and range of a, what's called a discrete function. There's a finite number of points there. So for domain, just list the x's that are used. Now it's helpful to put them in least to greatest order, but I don't care about that. Just list every x that was used. Now, if they repeat, it's just a list. So you don't have to put it twice. You shouldn't put it twice. Just put what's there. So the only x's that I see in this list right here are uh, negative 18, negative 13, uh, 6 and 7. So you're going to use that set notation with the little uh, brackets. Okay, now let's do range. Range, we're just going to list the y's. If there's any repeats, you only list it once. I like putting them in least to greatest order, but that's not necessarily required. Um, so I see negative 15, negative 12, uh, 4, 9, and I forgot zero. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, that's the range. Now let's look at number four, domain, or the x's. Um, negative six, negative three, negative one, and 15. If they're used more than once, only write them once, but all of those were different. Uh, range are the y values, let's list those. I'm going to go in least to greatest order. Again, not super important, but negative uh, 3, 0, uh, 9, and 16. So um, that is your first homework for Chapter 3, 3-1-A.